Well, hospital staff who allegedly tried to illegally access Princess Kate's medical records at the London Clinic Hospital, that was where she underwent abdominal surgery, they could face criminal prosecution. The attempted data breach comes as UK security forces suggest that Russian-funded trolls and bot accounts may be deliberately spreading conspiracy theories on platforms such as X and TikTok. Footage obtained by The Sun earlier in the week showing the princess looking healthy and relaxed during a recent shopping trip has failed to quash wild speculation about her health. Well, joining me live is the author and royal uh, biographer, Tom Bauer. Tom, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we have seen footage of Princess Kate out and about at a kind of garden centre in Windsor. What more proof do people need? This must be shocking and surprising to you as someone who's followed the royal family for such a long time to actually see well, the, these crazy conspiracy theories. Well, cr crazy conspiracy theories even perpetuated by a BBC reporter. I mean, that's how mad the whole thing has become. Uh, there seems to be a feeding frenzy, which unfortunately, uh, Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace have not suffocated. They haven't put it down. I and should I say the BBC reporter did take, the, did take that information off off their Twitter, but at the same time, this is this is everywhere, isn't it? Anywhere you go online, in every timeline, including mine, there are all sorts of conspiracy theories, even though we've seen her alive and well, Tom. I agree, but I mean, they may have taken it down, but the truth is, how could a BBC reporter actually perpetuate that sort of falsehood? I mean, it's just beyond belief um, what has happened. The news management is really appalling at the moment, uh, and I blame the palace for that entirely. I don't think it was very wise of Kate and William to go to that shop on Saturday morning without a lot of pre-preparation. Mm. It was silly to actually allow just a member of the public, so to speak, spot them. That was just very bad news management. Because but that was I always mean, going to be problem... grainy, Tom. That was always, it was not going to be a sort of official thing. But then I suppose if they had had an official thing and they called a camera crew or a photographer to be there, they may have been criticised for that as well. Can they do anything right at the moment? Now the, the trust has been breached in regard to the, the photograph that came out on Mother's Day? Well, I think there could be. I mean, they shouldn't go out. They should stick to the original plan, which was that she would be available after Easter. The real problem is they keep the palace keeps on changing the agenda, although I do think the Waleses keep changing the agenda too, is all just out of control. And the only way to stop it, the only way to control it, is to make sure they don't appear in public until it's very carefully orchestrated. And as for all the trolls and the rest, this is all a feeding frenzy because, again, uh, it's been so badly managed. Uh, this is a woman who clearly, even from the photograph on Saturday, is not looking terribly well and needs time to recover. And if only there was a spokesman in Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace to make that clear, it would be so much better. But unfortunately, uh, this has all got out, out of control. And I do believe that there is a sort of feeding frenzy, which is part of the reason why in the London Clinic, allegedly, somebody tried to get her records because they could get a lot of money for it. Uh, people will capitalise financially on this story. Again, it's most regrettable. But I do blame the palace for letting this happen. You're one of the top investigative journalists in the country, Tom, and you will know the lengths sometimes people go to, although I'm sure you never have, to pay money to get things like those medical records. Where is that likely to have come from? Because we hear all these theories about Russia, about other state actors and all of this. Would that likely have been something to do with the country, do you think? Or do you think that would have been just a newspaper or, or media organisation? No, I think if it did happen in the London Clinic, it was just one individual who saw a, a case of has a source of easy money. Uh, I mean, there are always these sort of people in institutions who are greedy and unscrupulous, and it's the management's task to make sure they're quickly spotted and kicked out. Uh, it, of course, it's a hugely damaging to the London Clinic uh, because this is a terrible thing to have happened if it did happen, but it is awful. But I do think Russia and the trolls there will be fueling this speculation. I mean, one of the great assets Britain does have is its royal family. And Russia is now an enemy because of the Ukraine war. And they can see quite easily a rich picking field to file lots and lots of damaging stories to undermine the world's confidence in our royal family. Well, and the royal palaces should have been aware of that danger and made sure that it was instantly nipped in the bud. But unfortunately, they didn't. 
Well, on that and point, Tom, but problem we, nowadays. on that point, Tom, we've seen William has mentioned Ukraine and presumably made himself a target for the Russian government on that. We've seen a lot of changes in how the royal family has been dealing, not just with political issues, live political issues, but also in terms of its PR management and so on. We have this sort of weird, to me anyway, and you're the expert, a sort of half in, half out kind of idea where we're given some information about their health, but not all information about their health. Can this situation continue and who's to blame for it? You say there are lots of problems, but is it the PR machine? Is it the wheels as themselves? What do you think? Well, I do think it's the palace's officials, but who appoints them in the first place is the real problem. King Charles, when he was Prince of Wales, was notorious for only employing people who said yes to him. And if someone said no, they were instantly fired. I fear that uh, William, the Prince of Wales, has, is copying his father. And together, neither of them are actually making sure that they have wise, experienced men at the centre strategizing how to cope with this problem. It got off to a good start and then went pretty bad. I mean, the, the public, of course, was very sympathetic to both William and Kate and, of course, King Charles for their illnesses. And they're very popular. Uh, but unfortunately, it has now gone a bit sour. Of course, it can be rescued. But at the moment, I don't have much confidence that there's anyone in either palace who has the ability and, more importantly, the trust of the King and Prince William to actually get a grip of it. That is the problem. It, seem, it seems to just be floating around rather yeah, yes. than... Yes, how, how can anchor. it be rescued, Tom, just briefly? Well, it can be rescued just by having a proper strategy. Someone should come out who is a named spokesman and say, this is the situation. I am speaking on behalf of the King and Prince, uh, Princess, uh, Prince of Wales and the Princess Kate, and this is what's happened. And I now ask you to go away and believe both are alive and recovering in one way or another, and there's nothing more to be said till after Easter. Uh, and that would do the trick. Uh, it's just everything is always anonymous. Mm. It's fed out through these royal correspondence or not fed out, and there's nudges and winks, and it's just a ridiculous way of communicating with the public. They need to be real. Tom, thank you very much indeed. That's Tom Barr there, who is a uh, royal uh, author and uh, investigative journalist as well. Thank you to Tom Barr.